did have a part failure. I want you to look at this. So you do not want to let that last in that configuration very long. I came back without the cap on it and I was like, okay. And that's what I found. Well, this old Nielsen grinder came my way. And I don't know whether or not it had any history or not, but it was built in Oregon. So we're going to just see whether or not we can get a chain to cut after it spent a little time on this little grinder. And uh, it's got the two wheels. That one's for really a small chain, but I want to use it because I like to cut a little more of the side plate out, and that seems to do that pretty well. I don't know where the rakers are going to end up, but <laughs> you know, what the heck, just see what it does. That's the approach I have with this thing right here. I have to get a switch for it. The switch is not working. Let's see what it did. I think the only thing that really proved to me was how uneven I was sharpening the chain before. So, this was a fairly badly rocked chain. Let's see if it brings it back somewhat. We'll see, right? I'm going to run it today. Let me see what I can I'll put it on the I'll put it on the 562. I may have to go back through this one. See that one didn't quite get to the end of its rocky rockedness. Yeah. I think I have to cut a little more off of this one. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to run it through one more time. Like this one right here, you can see it didn't quite get to the end of it. So, I need to be even more aggressive. Now I'll probably go in there with a file and clean that out, but I'm just going to try it the way it is. Look at that. That one there, this was an overly aggressive grind I had done for one of my big displacement saws, and I couldn't run it on anything but. <laughs> so, it got rocked pretty bad actually. I had to take a lot of that top plate off but this one already has the raker taken down. So uh, let's give this one a try too. We'll give them both a try. 20 inch, 24 and let me tell you what if this works I have a whole box full of chains. About a five gallon bucket full. I'll go through and try to salvage them you know and we'll see what happens. Not quite sure how to do this because there really isn't a scientific way of doing it. 
but I'm going to try to run this chain I just whipped with that little chain grinder that uh, was basically on its way to either a garage sale or a dump and I was able to salvage it. This is the wedge driver which basically I put together this year. Got a lot of grief because of the handle in the grain but I've driven a bunch of wedges so far and actually the only thing I've had to get used to with this wedge driver is a little bit longer handle because the one I had before was like this with a four pound head. That's like a three and a half pounder a little bit longer handle but as I get more and more used to it you know like anything else when you get used to a tool you start adapting and changing and and it's working quite well for me. And I, I got this handle up in Canton, New York. I believe I got it at Coakley's. It's a hardware store up there. It works. You know, it's simple. And this head I got at one of those uh, like flea market style places over in Bockville, New York <laughs> for like 10 bucks. So I think I have a total of $20 into this thing. Look at that. Of course, the other one I had nothing into it. So we're, we're moving up in the dollars here. But it's been the wedge driver I've used so far this year. And I'm just going to run it for the rest of the year to see if it holds up. And then maybe next year, build another one for fun. But works just fine. Now, let me first take a cut with that chain as it is. That's a stock chain out of the box. It's got a couple of trees on it, but it's actually still in pretty good shape. Yeah, it cuts good enough. Let me put the camera down, get the saw started, take a couple of cuts on that hard maple right there, and then uh, put the other chain on and do the same thing and see if it actually cuts. <laughs> That's what a stock chain will do. It's cutting all right. It's making pretty good chip. I think I've only touched it once with a file. You know. So let me get rid of that chain and put the other one on. <laughs> success it's a useful chain again let me just see again I'll do a bore cut that'll really be the kicker for me
I think I'm gonna run that chain today. I'll put the other one on tomorrow. I like it. You know, again, taking a piece of uh, equipment that that sat to go to the back of a garage and not be used. Get back to something useful, I think, is a is fun for me. And uh, I have to get the right decomp in there because that one has too big a hole. They actually have a different hole based on the different models. This is for like a 390 or something like that because you push that button and there is no compression. Now I put a different decomp in this little 562 because I had put one from one of the bigger saws in there and the, uh, the little hole diameter is too much. So it actually lost too much compression.
Well, these maple trees are a lot easier to deal with than the ash. And uh, so I left plenty of hens to make sure it went pretty much where I wanted it to. And it did. Now, one of the things you get is, why do you do that kind of cut? And oh my God, you're gonna lose so much wood. I want you to look up along that tree where that face cut is. It's out in the trim wood. You know, it's out, basically it was in the root flare in the trim wood. And that's partly why I do it. See, the root flare came all the way up to here. So basically I'm right about uh, along parallel to the size of the actual tree there. So I lost minimal amount of wood. And that saw, I guess I could have gone a little bit lower, but that's the chain that I did on that grinder. And uh, I would have liked to have gone a little bit deeper in the face cut. It just wasn't cutting that good. <laughs> so I love So I ran out of patience and that's why I stopped where I did. But the other thing is with the saw here, it runs right into the root flare. So I really can't get too much. I might've picked up another two or three inches on that log. But that's about it, you know. And um, actually, the G395 with the OEM full wrap, it's better than this saw because it's a little bit closer to the saw. The distance from the blade to the edge on that one is actually a little bit better, you know. I think Husqvarna did that so there was more access to the side cover screws, you know. You can get in there a little easier. But that's really a pain and it does limit how low I can get. If I get back to using that saw for real instead of for fun and games, I'm going to put the standard handle back on it so I can get a little bit lower. So, so here's another one. Let me get the saw log out of it and then uh, trim up the, the base of that log. fired the 562 it's just been a little bit too much of a hassle in uh, combination of the chain not being that good it actually cuts pretty good cross grain but with the grain now I'll tell you what it just grinds makes dust so I got to work on that but uh, I was actually surprised at how well it cut cr across the grain but when you're with it it was just grinding dust and the bar was just kept getting in my way. I kept having a hard time getting down low with that that bar. It just sticks down too far. So I may take that saw and reconfigure it because right now the way it is, it's just not working for me. I got to do something different. But that's why we do these things. That's why we try. You know what I'm saying? So I'm back to a more conventional setup right there, and that's my John thread. That's my backup saw.
that is that is so so much easier to get down there and work with. So I'm just gonna let it rip and hope it goes. down the crotch of a very, very narrow tree. So now I got myself a problem. Let me just go get the tractor and pull it out. But so much for precision selling for me. But I'll tell you what, that saw right there is right back to where I want to be. Really, really nice work saw. So now I have to get that thing off the stump. And that looks like a nice tree. So I'm pleased. Let me go get the tractor and see if I can get it off of there. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> 